gentlemen, today is Wednesday, March 31st, and welcome back to another episode here on CellMed. And today we're going to be spending a day in the life with an interventional cardiologist at The Ohio State University. And today I'm really excited to take you guys into the cath lab where we do our procedures and we um, rather they kind of um, treat people who come in with heart attacks or people who need angiograms and we'll go through all the different things that happen throughout the day but I'm really excited to take you guys with me we're all changed up in our scrub attire for the procedures today and we're gonna go ahead and get started so I'll see you guys in the cath lab <music> Alright guys, so update number one, just got to the hospital. Um, we're gonna go to the cath lab. We're gonna change into the new scrubs, like the sterile scrubs. So we're gonna do that and then go into the cath lab and look at some procedures today. So I'll see you guys there. So we are in the bathroom right now just for another quick update. We just did a routine angiogram, which is essentially they take iodine as a contrast and they inject it into the arteries. And essentially what this does is it allows the interventional cardiologist and the team to see where the blocked area of the artery is. Now this was just like a checkup uh, for this patient specifically. Uh, it's just something routine where they get it done like once a year if they have previous history of any heart disease or coronary artery disease. So they did just a routine angiogram. There was no issues, which was great. There was no blockages. Um, patient will you know, go home in about um, an hour and will be discharged from the hospital. All right guys, so just another quick update. Um, another patient came in. The procedure's happening right now. I had to go do something for my research lab actually in the middle of the procedure, so I believe. But what pretty much interventional cardiologists do is they do a lot of intervention, right? That's in the name. So if a patient has a blocked artery, then the job of the interventional cardiologist is to essentially put a stent or like a balloon in the artery and kind of it removes any plaque, right? So if there's a blocked artery, it's blocked by plaque or if there's something blocking it, right? So essentially the interventional cardiologist goes in, places a balloon within the artery and it inflates and gets rid of that plaque, allowing the blood flow to return to the artery. So it's a very minimally invasive procedure. They actually go through the radial artery, which is from the wrist, or the femoral artery, which is in the thigh. So that's how they get access to the heart. So we're gonna get back to the cath lab and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right guys, so in the bathroom again for another quick update. We just finished another procedure, again, a routine angiogram. There wasn't really much going on today in terms of uh, severity of the cases. Most, just, most of them were just diagnostic angiograms just to see if there are any problems. There was one case that we saw, this man came in about 70 years old. His arteries were ginormous for some reason. Like they were like some of the biggest arteries I've ever seen. There are some patients that actually come in with that type of anatomy and there's no particular reason why. Um, but you can definitely compare because his arteries were so large, you can definitely see where the disease was because the areas of the artery which were small, those were the diseased part of the arteries. So in that case, the interventional cardiologist really can't do much there at that point. It's just medical management with medication. Um, so that actually wraps up the day. It is currently about 3.15. Um, so we'll just do a quick overall overview once we get back to the apartment. So I'll see you guys there. Alright guys, so we're now back in the apartment. It is about 3.30 p.m. Uh, the cases actually ended at about 2.30, but I stuck around with the attending and as he wrote his notes and we just chatted a, a bit about like TV shows and stuff, just relaxed and talked. Um, but typically cases range from ending at like 8 p.m. at night to like 2 o'clock like today. 
And this actually happened on Monday where the cases actually ended around 2 p.m. But the attending physician got a call from the cardiac surgeon who they said that they were struggling with this patient who was having issues with their heart. And just to break down what exactly was happening, essentially this patient was having problems with their aortic valve. So the job with the left ventricle is to take the blood and pump it out through the aortic valve to the rest of the body. And essentially what was happening with this specific patient was that the blood was actually backflowing into the left ventricle and it was actually messing with the potential gradient, the potential, the radiant potential within the heart. So that could actually lead to stroke and death. So I was actually listening as the doctor was making the phone call to the family and saying like, you know, this is a very high risk procedure and there is a chance that this patient uh, like your loved one may die and it was kind of you know surreal to hear that because imagine being the family member on the other side of the phone call where you get a phone call from the doctor and that they say that there's been complications with the procedure and um, uh, you know your loved one may die so the interventional cardiology attending was called down and the surgery team they brought them the patient down in the cath lab and it was literally like a movie scene like there was 20, 25 people, nurses, doctors, anesthesiologists, um, you know, pharmacists all working to get this patient back to normal. And it took about an hour and a half and the interventional cardiologist was the one leading the team and he was actually the one that ended up fixing the patient within an hour to an hour and a half. So it was definitely really uh, gratifying to see something like that happen because, you know, uh, the doctor, the interventional cardiologist, was the one to fix this patient. Um, so it was definitely really cool to see everyone working together. And that's why I love medicine so much is because everyone's working as a team to get the solution, which is treating the patient. So some people don't go into interventional cardiology because they think the work-life balance might not be as suitable. But for example, like it's currently, you know, it was 2.30 and they were all wrapping up to go home for the day. And you get days like that but then you also get days where you know you're there until 8 p.m doing procedures or you get the STEMI patient and essentially STEMI is like someone who gets myocardial infarction or that's just a fancy term for a heart attack so a patient comes in with a heart attack the interventional cardiologist is the one that's going to go in and unblock that artery so that throws off the entire day as well there are also some days that you get a patient whose procedure takes about three hours that's this actually happened a few weeks ago where this super complicated patient came in and um, you know there was like four or five interventional cardiologists all working on this one case because they're struggling with this one one uh, part of the procedure and it ended up taking three hours and that pushed back the rest of the cases till like 8 or 8 30 p.m at night so that also happens sometimes but at the end of the day when you realize what type of work you're doing and what you're doing to help these patients it's something that's, you know, unmatched, right? You're not going to be, you, whatever job you may have, I don't think there's any more of an impact, more of an impact that you're going to make in any other field. With that, guys, I'd like to wrap up today's vlog. If you guys have any questions about interventional cardiology or cardiology in general, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. And I'll do some research on that topic. And I could even ask some of the physicians that I work with and shadow with and ask them, you know, what, you know, what are the answers to these questions and what are their thoughts regarding these specific questions that you guys might have. So please leave those in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. And as I said, I'll see you guys in the next video.